good day, uh, Albin. Um, we will uh, make an interview today with the first uh, female pilot of Papua. So, Albin, uh, her real name is Betty Melani Mofu, the daughter of Reverend Mofu from Mamramo. Uh, Betty uh, was born in Wamena in the highlands and her ancestors from father's side uh, originate from Angruk. They were actually uh, co-workers uh, of our first missionaries there, uh, Dr. Siegfried Söllner and Dr. Frind. Yes, it is a great, great pleasure for me uh, to um, have you today, to meet you today. This is the very first time uh, that I meet you. I have heard a lot about you because you're quite famous already, even though you're just 21 or 22 years old. Uh, she was born in 1999 uh, and she is already a pilot. She's a fully qualified pilot. Um, let me ask you, uh, Betty, um, how, how was your school career? How did you get the basic qualification to be, uh, to be chosen to enter the aviation school? Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us about your basic education? Oh, yeah, sure. So, uh, I was graduated from elementary school in Sudani, Yepeka Onomi. And after that, I entered uh, SMP or junior high school, Negri uh, Dua, Santani. And then I moved to SMA Negri Tiga, which is a uh, senior high school. Yeah. It's in Waina. And after that, uh, that... That is very interesting. This yeah. senior high school in Waina, yeah. which is a suburb of Jayapura, uh, this seems to be a very special school. Can yeah. you tell us something about that? Because I think um, in Papua, only that school that pre pre uh, prefer dorm for all the students who want to study there, they can stay in dorm. Yes. So they can study more seriously, serious. And yeah, th I think that school is one of the best in Papua. Very good. Yeah. So this uh, this school, SMA Negri Tiga. Tiga yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. they, they usually call Buper? Buper. Yeah. Buper. So Buper. Yes, um, I heard that when you attended this school, this uh, senior high school, uh, there was still a regulation that 80% of the students had to originate from Papua mm -hmm. and um, had to be Christian. Um, and 20% was open for all others. Mm. Uh, but this uh, seems to have changed uh, yeah. by now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now this special regulation for for Papuans and for Christians doesn't apply anymore. Now yeah. it's open for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so uh, have you been a very su successful student at senior high school? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Can you tell us what were your favorite subjects? Um, I think all. And mostly All subjects. And most, mostly uh, English. English. Yeah. Did you have a good English teacher? Yeah, mm -hmm. but not really because I can speak English because uh, I've been learning in SEAL. Mm -hmm. TTIP, we call TTIP. This uh, is a, a Bible translator's yeah, yeah. Uh, community yeah. in Sentani. In Sentani, yeah. So that's where you learned your yeah. excellent English. Uh -huh. Because yes. I really want to speak in English. So. After graduate from high school, yes. I entered TTIP, which is in SEAL, yeah. and I learned from from basic, yes. which is I learned how to speak, how to write, how to make a conversation, yes. how to listen and grammar, yes. and, stuff. and after graduate from basic, I helped TTIP yeah. to teach. So you were teaching so English yeah, as well. So yeah, I, I was teacher mm -hmm. also. So how many months have you been at SIL, at this uh, institute? Uh, it's about two years. Two years? Yeah. So you finished SMA at the age and of 17, so 
senior high school at the age of 17. Yeah. And then you spent two years and with the did. Bible translators. Yeah. And then, what happened then? And when I was in the VIP, they, uh, they were asking me, what do you want what, what do you want to be in the future? Yes. And I said that I want to be a pilot. Mm. And they said, oh yeah, we can guide you. Yes. And after that, they, uh, they give me an opportunity yes. so I can learn in Yajasi yeah. for two or, sorry, for two months. So I, I was there in Yajasi. Where is that? And it was in, uh, it is in the Santani. In Santani. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. In so that's Yajasi. a kind of an aviation school yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I was, uh, I was meet, no, uh, I was meet a lot of pilot there. Yeah. And they were helping me. Yes. And after that, I, I, I thought that I have to be a pilot. Yes. And, and then I told to my mom and dad that I want to be a pilot and yeah my mom and I we were going to Jakarta and yeah I entered Very good. Flying. So you went to the real aviation school yeah. in Jakarta. Uh, mm -hmm. It's good. And, uh, when I was entered in pilot school there are a lot there, there are a lot of people. Yes. They were asking me why you want to be a pilot, yeah. and I say because my parents, my parents uh, Pendeta Dani and my mom yes. Pendeta Gerda, they were working in Mamramo for almost two, 21 years. Yes, so your mother is also a pastor. Yeah. Oh, both very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So both of her parents are pastors. Yeah. Very good. And yes. when I was a kid, I was I was sick, and I. Oh, not almost, but I passed away. Yes, yes. But because of God, I can raise again. Yes. And at the time, I said that I want to be a pilot so I can help a lot of people who live so far from city, yes. like in mountain, in yes. island, like yes. that. Yeah. So I want to help them. So how old have you been when you had this experience of dying and? You revived again. It was it it was happened when I was this happened when I was uh, three or four years. Four years old. Yeah. Oh yes, three or four years old. So you already took the decision you want to become a pilot yeah. at the age of four years. Not pilot, but I said to my parents that one day I will help a lot of people, so they can they they will not experience like what I have been. This is what you call a divine calling yeah. at the age of four, yeah, <laughs> to help other people. And yes. also, I was growing up in the different places, like in Angrut, Wamena, and in Wamena, in Mamramo, and yeah. Sitani. Yeah. So already at a very early age, yeah. you have been living in the highlands, yes. and you have been living at the coast. Yeah. Uh, so you know the variety, the great variety in Tanah Papua. Yeah. Very good. Okay, tell us about this uh, pilot school you attended in Jakarta. Yeah, uh, the name of that school is Aeroflyer Institute. Yes. It is in Jakarta, in Tangerang. Yeah. Uh, I entered that school at uh, May 2019. Yes. Yeah. And I start learn, learn for for ground class about six six months yes. and after that I start to fly the aircraft, aircraft. That means at the age of 19 you were already flying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And it's about five months ago I got my PPL license. Yeah. PPL it's for private pilot yeah. which is I can fly the aircraft, aircraft only with myself and the aircraft. Yeah, yeah. 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 So bringing goods bringing to the highlands like food, medicine and so uh, on. Yeah. Uh, it is for PPL. Yeah. Uh, uh, for PPL, I only fly the aircraft with myself, uh -huh. not with the baggage and people. Oh, no, oh, yeah. only yeah. myself uh -huh. and the aircraft. Yeah. But now I train for CPL. Yes. It's for commercial pilot license. Yes. Which yes, is yes I yes. can bring a uh, baggage and people. On. That's right. And how long will that take? It will take almost six months. Six months. Or five. It yeah. depends on the weather, 
Yeah. If it's good, then I can test them what they have to yeah. But if not, then it maybe it takes a lot. So you are presently enrolled in that course? Mm -hmm. So in another six months or so, you will be able to bring medicine and food and yeah. stuff to the islands. Very good. I'm sure the people in the highlands will be very grateful to see a, a young Papuan woman uh, helping them yeah. in a dire situation. Uh, what uh, would you tell other young people, other Papuan people or other young people who live in Tanah Papua? Um, how can they help other people? Of course, some could also become a pilot, but uh, can you think about um, what they should do in order to achieve such goals? I think uh, they need to try. Because I, I see a lot of people, they can, but they won't try. Mm -hmm. Like they have something that God, have, God has given to them, yes. but they, they want to ex explore. Yes, they, they don't want to explore. Yeah. Yeah, they are yeah. afraid to explore. Yeah, and they afraid to be failed. Yeah, oh, that's always the problem, eh? that, yeah. that people are afraid to fail. Yeah. So they don't try. Yeah, that's right. Yes, and uh, what are your goals for the future? You are very young. You are only 21 years old, I think. Or 22? 21, yeah? 21. 21. So you, sh you must have even greater goals for the future. Do you want to fly commercial airplanes or what would your plans be in 10 years time, and 20 years time? I want to be a missionary. A missionary? Yeah. Very good. So in the tradition of your father and your grandfather, grandfather. who worked with missionaries in Angaruk, you also want to be a flying missionary? Yeah. Very good. Yes, uh, what else uh, can we ask? Yeah, Human um, rights. So you say you want to be a missionary. Uh, usually when we think about pilots or people who have studied the natural sciences or so, uh, yeah, they may be less interested in, in religious matters. What about you? Are you still a very strong believer? Are you still a very strong Christian? I'm a strong Christian. So, I really so all that. this the, this knowledge uh, didn't interfere with your faith. Yeah. Thank you. Um, may we uh, ask uh, something to your father about some of your experiences? Mm -hmm. uh, so when you fly, at the moment you will be flying on your own mm -hmm. uh, to the highlands and so. Um, what is the situation like in the remoter places? Uh, did you see, let's say, difficult situations where the people are in need of food and in need of medicine or where the people um, are in a refugee situation? Uh, have you seen, have you witnessed yeah. uh, things like that? Could you tell us something yeah. about that? I think in Papua, people are really need education. Because when we talk about food, they, they have food. Because they have a garden, yes. and they have food. And clothes, they have already. But the education, they, have, they, they don't have. And I think education is more important than everything. And yeah, I think the new generation, they really need education. So what about these schools? Like there is a school in Angro. Don't they operate well? What is your observation about these schools that are already there? Um, I'm not really understand in Angrup, but in Mambramo, yeah. they they have school, but the teacher doesn't there. teach. Yeah, How only come? one or two teachers yeah. there. So, what does the teacher do if he doesn't or she doesn't teach? I. <laughs> <laughs> so they are just not there. Yeah. Uh, I've heard similar things from other students. Yeah. This is a very strange thing. Yeah? People become a teacher, and once they beca uh, have become a teacher, they don't yeah, teach. Don't teach. Yeah. So you can ask yourself, why? Why aren't they teaching? Okay, let us 
leave this as an open question mm -hmm. at the end of our interview. Uh, I think you're very right that uh, education is the key for success. Yeah. It's the key for progress and development. Mm -hmm. So let us hope and pray that education in the remoter places of Papua will be as good as in your school in SMA Legritiga in Nwaina yeah. in the future. I really admire you because uh, you are a pastor who has been working in the highlands and also in very difficult uh, situations in Mambramo. We know Mambramo is a very, very difficult place to work. Um, what is your motivation to work in the most difficult places in Papua? So my father, he was uh, growing up in the difficult place. So he wanted to uh, implement what he has experienced in Angu in uh, Mambramo. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So you have been growing up in in a, a difficult situation. You have managed to become a, an outstanding pastor and now you want to help others to improve their situation as well. That's very remarkable. Uh, do you think it has something to do with your father? Your father was also a missionary co-worker in Angaruk. He was a co-worker of uh, the medical doctor Friend. Uh, and uh, from the Netherlands and uh, the theological doctor Zöllner. Um, do you think that this cooperation with the missionary missionaries um, gave your father a special motivation and this has been handed down to you as his son and to Betty as his granddaughter? So he, my grandfather, he was helping for medical and also uh, uh, MIF, yes. helping for the weather and give the information to the airplane. So my father said to my dad that he has to become a pastor. Yes. Yeah. And this was handed down even to you, yeah. who wants to become an. Missionary. A missionary, a flying missionary. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like what um, the Apostle Paul says uh, in his letter, uh, I think it's in his letter to the Corinthians, that uh, the one uh, plants, the other one cares for the plant, and uh, the third one um, can harvest the fruit. Yeah. So now you are harvesting the fruit of what your grandfather planted. Very beautiful. Yes, thank you. Um, I think that, um, uh, yeah, perhaps tell us a little bit about your mother, because your mother is also a pastor, yeah. and um, she's also working under very difficult circumstances in Mambramo. Um, Tell us, where does your mother come from? Where does her ancestors come from? So my fa my mother is coming. Uh, my 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 mom coming from Diak. My mom is Diak. Yeah. She is a pastor. She was a pastor. Yeah. Because three months, three weeks ago, she passed away. Oh, I'm very sorry. Yeah. Because of sickness. And yeah. My mom and my dad, they were working together in yes. mom and mom and mom. Yes, I'm very sorry to hear that, but she still uh, knew that her daughter was a pilot. Yeah, she, she's really proud of me. She was really proud of you. Yes. Okay. Um, what do you hope your... Do you want to get married later on? Yeah, but not now. Not now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, what what do you hope for your children later? Uh, they can help people, and they. I really hope that they they will be a good Christian, a strong Christian, that fear of the planet. That's very good, and um, 
uh, what should the place mm -hmm. or the land of Papua be like for your children? So let's say that in five years time or in ten years time you will have your own children. Mm -hmm. What would your dream be for them? What must Tanah Papua be like for them? Uh, what I want is, I hope that the next generation, they can have the good uh, education, yes. they can have a good um, place to live in Papua. If, if you say a good place, what, what do you mean? Like they have, they can have what they want. Like uh, I can say that they can do what they want in Papua. Like yeah, they can do what they want. So they will have opportunities yeah. uh, to do what they, they want. want. And all over the world, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully there will be Papuans also uh, serving the Lord in other continents. Yeah. Europe, in Africa, in America. Hello, Irene. I'm very proud that you finally made it with the small fund that actually UEM uh, sent every year to the Giga Itana Papua. And you make the best out of it. And what I wanna what I wanna say is like this. When I was still in working in Europe, and now living in Papua, uh, what I heard and in discussion with many of the Papuans, they shared their experience of being treated unjustly in their own land. They experience the, the, the torture they had, they had the feeling of being discriminated against as Papua because of their beautiful curly hair and uh, the color of their skin which I consider very beautiful but for the, in the eyes of others it is somehow, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it but my question is do you also have the experiences, like many other Papuan, that you are being treated unfairly as a Papuan? People ask me this question, it's really hard for me to answer because somehow I'm afraid to speak up because something, but when I was a kid, I experienced it. Not everybody is afraid of sharing their experiences because exactly when we say I experience this and that and this and that then people realize that there is something wrong that there are things to be changed and I don't know probably you can explain a little bit not in depth but do you also have the feeling that because you are a Papuan that you are not treated the way you should have been treated? Yeah. But it happened when I was a kid, but not now. When I was a kid, we were living in Mamramo and yeah, something just happened. The military of Indonesia, they came and they thought that my father and my mother um, are working for Papua for, uh, for freedom, of yeah, freedom of Papua but actually not mm -hmm. so they were like so they were like the military they were uh, asking me they say that just tell me the truth that your parents are not pastor and they put the gun and so on so yeah it's really hard for me to explain because when I say that, like the memories come in my brain and really hard. And you meet and you will be meeting a lot of people, a lot of Indonesians. Do you still 
do you have an experience that being treated differently or in the community of your schools that you are treated like other Indonesians? Like in Jakarta, there when I, I was there, they said that why your skin is so dark like that, and they said that uh, in Papua are they are they still eating people like that, and they said that uh, when you come to, when you come to Jakarta and you wear clothes, and I said no. So there is a lot of prejudices yeah. uh, against the Papua, probably because they've never been here. Yeah. Social media, they yeah. often explore about the tradition of Papua that they were wearing um, traditional clothes, koteka, and something like that. So people that live in, out of Papua, they thought that in Papua, people in Papua, they still wear that clothes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, there are ways to change the mindset of other Indonesians so that they can look eye to eye with the Papuans as equal. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Can, can we really change the mindset of other Indonesians that Papuans are all also worthy of being taken seriously? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what we should do is like we have to explore, explore about Papua, and we have to show them that Papua are like this, not like what they thought before. And do you think that you managed to do that in your school? That you yeah you come out yeah yeah then I'm, yeah. I always tell them about Papua and I show some pictures, video and everything about Papua so they can change their mind. So some of my friends in island school, they understand what is what it happened in Papua right now. Mm -hmm. Like in Papua they have more. Mm -hmm. They have this, they have this, they have this. Mm -hmm. I show them some pictures, some videos. I tell them the stories about Papua. When you were young, of course, and when your father was living in Angrup or in Mambramo, the surrounding, the nature is very beautiful, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. Because I also often travel to the highlands yeah. of Papua. Um, is it still like that? Uh, Not all of them, but some. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what is the difference? Where come? Why the, the changes? The changes is probably because the modern thing come to that place, so the modern thing can help people there, not help but uh, change their mind, so they can be like better than before. They can wear some accessories that they never wear before. Mm -hmm. The buildings also. I also experience, or if I talk with women, especially girls here in Papua, I get the feeling that they are not treated the same way uh, boys or men are treated in this society. You are different. The way I see how your father is very proud of you, you are treated different. But is it uh, truth or general uh, praxis that women, girls are treated differently than than boys and men in this society? Yeah. In Papua, they think that the girl or a woman, when they growing up, the place that they were work is only in kitchen. They only stay in kitchen and the boy or the man they will work but what I think now the man and the woman they are the same the different thing that make them different are the gender so I can I want to uh, change people uh, mind that girl also can be like what uh, boy like they they are the same I think uh, Many girls should learn 
about you. They should get the, your video. They should get to know you, your experience. Mm -hmm. Then they can gain self confidence. Mm -hmm. That they can also be be somebody. Yeah. Eh? They can also be. Uh, yeah, let's say they can study, they can change their society the way you also change their society. Uh, but uh, I'm here also not to change the society that they think girls should be working in the kitchen. But what I think, I can work as a boy or as a man, but also I can work like a woman that they always think like working in the kitchen. So I can work for the I can work for both. Yeah, but the boys also can yeah, work outside, work. but also yeah. can work in the yeah. kitchen, right? Yeah. So, both should be working outside and inside and yeah. supporting each other to create a better balance, better and balanced yeah. society, I, I, I believe. So, thank you, Betty, for mm -hmm. this uh, yes. very inspiring story of a girl of 21 years old you are already be a blessing for your family and society and i believe that you will be even more stay healthy stay safe god bless you thank you, thank you. Thank you very much thank betty you. i'm very very impressed and i hope uh, all the best for you i wish you all the best for the future